Yes, uh, hello, my name is Einar Peter Reason, and I come from uh, the civil protection. Uh, you don't need to worry, my lecture will be short, and so this is the last uh, lecture of the day, so I think we can stand up very soon and go to our, uh, have the discussion going uh, in a more informal way. Uh, yes, uh, I'm first going to, uh, I was, had my uh, lessons learned from the civil protection, but maybe it's more from the uh, Word Package 3 altogether. And we have done some, a uh, little bit more of overlapping than maybe we thought, so maybe we will be quick going through some of the slides. But first about uh, uh, the Icelandic uh, civil protection, using this uh, acronym on the number of slides here. The, the institution with the long name, the National Commissioner of the Icelandic Police, Department of Civil Protection and Emergency Management. So this is really what it stands for. In Iceland it's really just known as Almanavarnir, or the Civil Protection, and we are a staff of, staff of nine. So we a lot of time get the question, yes, in what department of uh, the Civil Protection are you? Well, we are a staff of nine, so we basically do everything together. And we do uh, hazard and risk, uh, risk assessment, mitigation, coordination of uh, national response uh, to emergencies. We uh, co uh, coordinate with, uh, with local authorities, so we don't have a, a mandate to control, but we help coordinate. We run the National Crisis Coordination Center, and uh, we take part in uh, the EU civil protection mechanism, which has been part of our operation since uh, 2003. And then we do research. Uh, Future work is one such an example, and Nordres another one. And this is our uh, Future work partners. Uh, Sue went over this before, so we are working with uh, the Icelandic Met Office, University of Iceland, uh, UK Met Office, and the British Geological Survey in the project. Uh, here is a little bit uh, just about the, the big work package we were working in, so you can see uh, a lot of, uh, of tasks in, in that project, coordination of communication across Europe before, during volcanic arrest and interruption, so you can see the, uh, the, the bar was set quite high, uh, crisis communication, between scientists and civil protection, uh, facilitate ongoing hazard and risk evaluation, and then producing these reports on lessons learned. Uh, these are the main reports we've been writing. So we did a big 200 pages uh, report, which we now know is uh, maybe uh, not the format to publish uh, lessons learned uh, on the events like this. So I think we, our next step is uh, getting it down to maybe four pages. Uh, develop, development start out of uh, volcanic information was the last one, and then we are currently finishing the mapping of best practices, and then uh, the, feed, the feedback of future work will be uh, due in the spring. Uh, and. Uh, <coughs> For, uh, for us, the, the research topic is a little bit different than the, for the volcanologist. It's make be you, the stakeholders. So we've been sending out surveys and asking people how is the interaction going. And so these are the main stakeholder groups that we are uh, focusing on. Government, civil protection, meteorological service providers, scientists, the aviation sectors, uh, which is the re regulators, uh, air traffic control, and then the, the airlines, and tourism and media. Yes, uh, uh, we did these two big surveys. Uh, the first one was in 2013, and uh, it was on the Jökull and Grimsvörn. We will focus on the stakeholders' communication, flow of information, and uh, how is the contingency plans 
in all of these different sectors. Uh, and then we did another survey in 2015 with much more focus on our main product, the scientific advisory board fact sheet. And here you can see uh, the division between the sectors uh, on the survey focusing on 2010 and 2011 eruptions. You see civil protections uh, and government sector is uh, the way biggest one. And then science, meteorological service providers and uh, airlines. Uh, media, one word about the media. The media is of, is of course very, very important sector in uh, spreading information, but uh, serving the views of the media is quite hard. They are uh, keen on maybe asking questions instead of answering them, at least that's been our uh, experience. So we must find other ways to get those feedback. And you can see uh, some of the findings of the 2013 uh, survey. Knowledge about the unrest in Eyjafjallajökull did exist among the scientists, but uh, this uh, knowledge did not, re not really disseminate between uh, all the other sectors. So we had even a lack of knowledge in the meteorological service provider sectors, aviation sectors, uh, but at the same time they, you can see that there was a great appetite for uh, precursory information in the non-scientific sectors. And uh, we found out that there was some knowledge of a uh, lucky type eruption or major eruption in Iceland, but preparation for uh, such an event uh, are hardly on the way. Uh, as you, you know from today, AFL Yogurt has encouraged uh, like a paradigm shift for the aviation uh, sectors, the change of regulations, and uh, for the civil protection the sector in Europe, you can say a little bit the same. And uh, social media was hardly used in 2010, although it can be quite unbelievable now. It was only in the uh, airlines they were using social media. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the sectors of in 2015. Basically the same. The airlines are uh, uh, maybe not so uh, taking such a big part since uh, they were not uh, harmed in the eruption in Barabuka. And the key find exists is that uh, over 90% of the responders thought that communication and flow of communication was either better or much better than in the eruption during 2010 and 2011. So that is a big learning. Uh, based on the, on the, on the, on the survey, the, the fact sheet seems to be a very, very successful and appreciated document. It's a, we distribute it through something like seven, 700 uh, email addresses, but uh, it goes, uh, uh, each copy to uh, around 8,000 places, so it's distributed much, much further. And now social media is a vital part of our, all our operation. You can see here that uh, we started just using Twitter uh, during the Barlabaga eruption, and of course, our followers went up from 100 to close to 4,000 in two days. And you can see on the picture below that uh, we had like uh, impressions, 1.4 million impressions in this 40-day period. So you, social media is really an effective way to engage people. Uh, and a little bit more on the fact sheet. Uh, we asked the, the question if it was a useful or not document, and we got 100% yes for the usefulness. And uh, there you can see 80% said it was a vital to the operation, 42% said it was a very, very useful document, 37% uh, said it was uh, informative, but only 3% said it was uh, something was nice to have. Uh, uh, and this is again the fact it is like a communication communication tool for these organizations. 
uh, all information in one document, English and early, uh, Icelandic and English version, distributed uh, widely. And uh, when we are asking what they are using this document for, you can see it is used for, uh, as a source for media, so, uh, and that's uh, very important for a department of nine for a department of nine people to get people actually to know how to get the information themselves so they don't have to call us on the phone, uh, every single one of them. Uh, and I think I'm out of time, so maybe just go to the next one. So this is basically the, we are covering the all Northern Hemisphere, plus Australia and uh, Japan. And so, benefits of future, uh, future world for civil protection is that we are not no longer just uh, as an isolated end user, but getting to know uh, the scientific community, having a more voice in the scientific community, and uh, trying to play a stronger role with the uh, European civil protection mechanism. Uh, and like you've seen today, improved monitoring will hopefully lead to improved early warning. Thank you.